Okay, so we have seen rate laws. We've seen um, like the, the rate equation, which is basically we're, we've learned that rate is expressed in terms of the rate of a reaction is equal to the K for that reaction at that temperature times the concentration raised to some power. And that's the order of the reaction. And we've seen that they're almost always going to be first, second, or zero order. What's great about these is that you can vary concentrations, measure the rate, and from that we figured out we can determine the order and we can determine the K constant. And once you have those values, what you can do is somebody's already integrated or used calculus. Somebody's already integrated the rate equation for us and in AP Chem, we have it on our Gregor Gig sheet, the sheet you get for every test. So we have, if it's a first order, so if this is a one, when you take the integral, you get this equation, and what this does is this says the natural log of your concentration at time t minus natural log of your initial concentration at time zero equals negative k constant times time. That relates these values, which means if I know the concentration I start with and I measure how much time's gone by and I already know the k, I can tell you after one minute the concentration's gonna be this, after two minutes the concentration's gonna be this, after three minutes the concentration's gonna be this, so this gives me a way to figure out what the concentration is at different times. Beautiful. So that's the first order. If you are looking for this equation, take out your Greg sheet, look at the kinetic section. It's at the bottom of the kinetic section and it's like three equations up. Okay. Um, if n is a two, if it's second order, you use this equation. This is the second order integrated rate law and it's one over concentration at a certain time, minus one over the initial concentration, that's why times is zero here, equals k times t. Okay, so that means if I have three of these, of any of these, I can figure out the fourth. So if I know my initial concentration and I measure how much time goes by and I already know the k, I can find out what the concentration is at all the different possible times. The zero order is not on your Greg sheet, but you can think of it, about it as like, this is your initial concentration. You're losing this much, the K value, every minute, and this is how many minutes would go by. So this is how much concentration is left after those minutes have gone by. It's also kind of in a Y equals MX plus B format, which might help people if they like to think of this in terms of math or how it's re represented graphically, how you start off with a certain amount and you're losing concentration with time. Right, so this would be concentration and this is time. So here's your initial concentration. This is the rate at which you lose your concentration, and this is how much time has gone by. Okay, so let's try one of these out. I have rate of disappearance of sucrose equals K times the concentration of sucrose. There's no order written here, so it's first order. I actually wrote a one there and left it there. But if there's no order written, it's first order, right? It's the same as, you know, having it to the power of one. Okay, so I know it's first order. Um, I'm given a K constant, I'm given a concentration of sucrose, K constant equals 0.21 per hour, concentration of sucrose equals 0.01 molar, and the question is, how long will it take for the concentration to drop 90% to 0 0.001? So I have an initial concentration, a final concentration, a K, and I'm looking for the time, it's first order, so I'm going to use this equation. I'm going to just copy that equation first natural log of my final concentration minus natural log of my initial concentration equals negative kt. I know I'm solving for time, so I'm gonna go ahead and just divide both sides by a negative k. Divide by negative k, divide by negative k, and actually let's just go ahead and plug it in. Um, negative k is gonna be negative 0 0.021, one over hour, because this says per hour. My concentration, um, initially it was 0.01, and in the end it's going to be 0 0.001, and all of this will just give me T. Okay, so I can go ahead and solve for this. Natural logs, um, we probably haven't seen them very much in math, like I'm, I bet you haven't seen them or used them very much, but don't be afraid of them, there's a button on your calculator and all you have to do is push the button. So if you have a graphing calculator, you go natural log and then type in 0 0.001. If you have one of these like really simple calculators like I do, then you type in 
zero one, and then hit natural log. And I get negative 6.9. Okay. And minus, I type in the same thing, 0 0.01, natural log, minus a negative 4.6, all over a negative 0 0.021, and that is going to be 1 over hour. Okay, I won't have units from this, um, from the natural logs. And then I just go negative 6 minus a negative 4.6, so I get negative 2.3, negative 2.3, divided by a negative 0.021. And I get, oops, uh, let me try it one more time because I got a different number. Uh, let's see, I've got 2.3 divided by 0.02. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Sorry, this is 0.21 divided by 0.21, and okay, so it rounds to, it's 10.8, and it rounds to 11 hours. Okay. There's one trick with logs. So whenever you have one log minus another log, so if you have natural log of A minus natural log of B, that's equal to the natural log of A divided by B. Okay. So if we were only given this 90%, we could have typed in, um, well, we know we're going to have one tenth of something remaining. So we could have just typed in natural log of 0.1, because that would be this divided by this. A thousandth divided by a hundredth is one tenth. So natural log of 0.1, that would give you a negative 2.3. And so that's equal to the same thing as natural log of 0 0.001 minus natural log of 0.01. I promise that's going to come up. So this is a trick that we're going to have to be able to use. Um, there's just, just another way to solve the puzzle. So if you're not given these two values, but you're given the fraction they represent, then you can say natural log of that fraction and get the value. You don't actually need to type in each one. All right. Go ahead and make sure you actually type those in and make sure you know how to type it in in your calculator.